All right, so I was asked to do a tutorial on how to make a ghost for Destiny out of a cereal box. This one is one I put together just kind of because I was bored and I had a cereal box and some masking tape on hand and this is how it ended up looking at the end. Uh, granted, I, it's not the best, but um, made do with what I had and it came out decent. Um, so I'll be going over how to make this. Um, I've refined the process a little bit and hopefully it'll make sense to you. Uh, so start off with the materials you need. Uh, pencil, Sharpie helps, uh, X-Acto knife, and scissors and masking tape, and of course, cereal box. Of course, this one's been cut up already. I've already made some templates. But for the templates, I'll give you the exact dimensions of those in a file, hopefully included with this, but this is part of one of them. Measured everything down to uh, the half inch or quarter inch to get it, hopefully, you know, all the same all around, because this one has a lot of gaps that I don't like and not all the same lengths. So uh, hopefully this next one that I make will be a lot better and we'll see how it turns out. Uh, first of all, your template. Uh, you'll need, I'll give you the numbers of these that you need in the file below. Um, so these are just the templates that I'm going to use. And we'll get started. Uh, ruler always helps. I almost forgot about that. All right. All right. So I've gone ahead and uh, used my templates and made the basic shapes on just a you know a kicks box. And the only pieces I used were the two sides of the kicks box and the back. And that should be plenty to make a decent size uh, ghost roughly this size. So it's actually a bit large I think um, but um, I don't know the exact size that the ghost is supposed to be. When I made this one I just kind of guesstimated on the dimensions and um, I kind of eyeballed it a little bit, so it's a little, it's off in a lot of places. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut all these out, and when I come back, I'll show you how they all fit together using, you know, just your regular masking tape. Alright, so I've cut out all my shapes. Uh, except for the uh, the eyepiece here. Um, that will be done later and I'll show you exactly how to do that. It's pretty easy. Uh, but um, I do like to use a specific uh, way to do it, but uh, I'll show you that later. For now, let me show you how it all fits together. So, as you can see, I have my pile of scraps here. Um, I can just ignore that. I'm just going to take a couple of these pieces. What you're going to do is you're going to get eight of these. You're going to fit them together just like that. So the shortest sides, well not even the shortest sides, but you know what I mean. You're going to fit them together like that in kind of a zigzag pattern. So what right now we're making is this right here. That's the part we're making. Once we've made that, we'll put in these triangles, and then we'll do the same thing one more time for the back side. All right. So. All right. So here we are, about to start assembly on the ghost made out of cereal box. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab eight of these pieces. Six, seven, and eight. 
There we go, and we'll save all these other pieces for later. So the way this is gonna work, they're basically butting up short sides like this, like this, and like that. So one of the two ways. So for right now, I'm just gonna put them together like this. The sides that I want on the inside are right now on the outside. Putting a piece of tape right there. Good to go. So this is one small piece. And when I flip it inside out, it's gonna be like that. Now I'm gonna do that again, except this time, instead of having an inside piece, I'm gonna have an outside. So this one is gonna be like this. You can see the opposite direction. So basically a zigzag with the small piece, small edges touching. And I'm just going to go along until I have all the pieces put together. Again. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just depends on how you want it to look. If you want it to look cleaner, like right now you can see the, the masking tape in there. If you don't want to see that, you can always do it a different way. Um, I'm just doing this because I like the way it looks. It gives it a little more flexibility and makes it a little easier to put everything together in the, in the end. Because if you have everything butted up next to each other, it, it gives it a little bit less or more rigidity, which is all right, but just not my preference. So you can kind of see it taking shape. It's getting there. Once it's all done, it'll all connect. And by no means am I an expert on this. This is just something I enjoy doing and figured I'd share it with everybody because you know well, people wanted to know how to make it. So when it comes down to actually finishing this, what we're gonna do is put them up together like that. Now you can always apply masking tape to the other side as well, to the shy side that sh actually shows. That's just up to you, your personal preference, um, and if you want it to, um, to actually hold its shape a little bit better or longer. So holding it loosely, you should see it something like this. Now for these triangles, what we're going to do and take four of them and what you should do is make a dotted line in the center doesn't matter what direction it should be an equilateral tri triangle and what we'll do is I'm gonna take it on the edge of the table and bend it um, in on itself so what I'm gonna do is upside down on the table 
and fold it that way. Let me show you. Hopefully you can see it. So like this, it's about half. I'm not doing exact measurements, but you can see the the bend going in and just make it a little bit more I'm done. Do that three more times and good to go. I know you hear music in the background. Well, I don't know if you hear it, but um, I do have music in the background. It's just from uh, Live 365 uh, radio stations and it's playing some Van Halen right now. Now remember, this does not have to be perfect. It's just... Obviously, I don't have a perfect bend, but it gets me the shape that I want. And we'll go ahead and start putting these in. So the way these get put in, you're gonna go ahead and take your your uh, the top of your ghost, and basically you're gonna butt up the insides of the corner to the triangle. So just like that. Let's see if you can see it from this side as well. So the way that this works, I don't know if you saw it earlier. So I'm just folding it in on itself, so that way. It's easier for me to actually see it and do this. And it's gonna fit right in there. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna have it open like that. Grab some tape. And this one actually has a little bit too much tape on it. Just get it up there. Get it one more time. And this is how it should start looking. Just like that. Now you can always change up these edges because you can see right here, it doesn't look perfect, but you can always trim it down, or you can keep it the way it is. It's just your how you want to do it. Make sure it folds in on itself, because if it doesn't, you won't get the right shape in the long run. So, fold it. There we go. It looks a lot better now. I'm going to need some more masking tape here in a second. Make sure you uh, get smaller pieces of masking tape. As you can see, I had slightly larger pieces and it just takes a little extra time. Not a bad thing, but yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing right there. So starting on the back, on the inside, I'm sorry. I'm not using technical terms or anything like that. I'm not an expert. Just having some fun. Doing the same thing right here. I'm going to continue around. If you hear some stuff in the background, that's uh, one of my, or both my kids, actually, playing with uh, Legos and stuff. They didn't want to make ghosts today, but I'll show them how to do this eventually.
Now you can always use hot glue or um, other ways to support this, but I'm just using masking tape, obviously. So right now you get a basic top for your ghost or front, I should say. And now we're going to do one more exactly the same way. And uh, I'll show you how the rest of these pieces are used. I'm going to go ahead and pause and I'll finish the other side. Uh, if you want to go ahead and pause too so you can catch up or um, take a break or whatever you need to, go for it. Alright, so I've made my two sides, uh, front and back. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to attach these in order to connect the front and the back. So as you can see here, this piece right here is that, and it just connects the front and the back. So these two will just fit together like that. The way that's going to work. Just bend it halfway. Make sure you bend it the right direction that you want so that the uh, the correct side is facing out. Whichever side you want facing out, that's up to you. I prefer having the, the blank side, so maybe if I want to paint it later or do something, draw on it, I don't know, I can do that. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, this is what I consider the easy part right here. Now comes the slightly harder part, even though it's not all that difficult. So, basically you're going to take one, one side, make sure you match up the long side of the uh, trapezoid, and you're going to match it up like that, so that when you do fold it over, it matches up just like that to two sides. So. Without further ado, we'll give it a go. Probably put two pieces of tape because I made some short pieces. Now the hard part is getting the tape in there to fit just the way I want it to. So I'll put the tape on here first. Then I'm just going to fold the tape back as far as I possibly can, see if you can see that. And then I'm going to attach it from the inside, just like that. As you can see, my dimensions are still a little bit off. Um, that's probably just my cutting. I kind of went a little bit fast, so um, yeah. So we'll figure it all out in the end. Now I'm just going to continue this all the way around like that and I almost did that the wrong way
Okay, now I'm on the last piece, and I need more masking tape. Alright. Melt it again. Make sure you put it in the right direction because if you don't, if you put it in the opposite direction, it's not gonna fit correctly. Obviously. Should be something I don't even have to say, but yeah. As you can see, I almost put it on backwards two or three times. Didn't quite come out the way I wanted. There we go. Try and push that in there as much as I can from the inside. So right now, you have this kind of shape going on. Now this other piece is going to fit on this exactly the same way. See if I can kind of demonstrate that without putting any masking tape on it. Just doesn't. Yeah, that's not going to work out. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these back, put, apply some tape right along the edges, and then stick it on to the other piece. But before I do that, I'm going to make the eye. Oh, there we go. The eye. So I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty easy. Uh, I kind of saved it for last because it is very easy to do. Um, the way I'm going to do that though is this cake box. I'm going to take just a plain section here, uh, mainly so I can get this this color going. Now you can do this with any color you like uh, or any pattern, it's up to you. So I'm just going to take a small section right here, just going to cut that out real quick with some scissors. This is probably a lot bigger than I need it to be, but better safe than sorry. Now, I need to cut out, you know, a, a disc that can have a negative on it. So, I'm going to take my Kix box again, and I'm going to make it probably about twice this size. So you want it to be bigger than this hole right here. So you can kind of just eyeball it or you can measure it. It's up to you. Now as you can see that's not a perfect circle, but if you look at it there, hold it on there, it should give me a good fit. So what I'm going to do is on here I'm going to do a quick diamond in the center. So right about here. Let's draw a small diamond. That's a bit big. So there's my diamond. I don't know if you can see that. And then right on around that I'm going to draw two arms coming down. You could obviously do this with a ruler, make it a lot cleaner. I'm just doing this to save a little bit of time so you guys have an idea of what to do. So as you can see that's not very clean, but I can cut that out easily. Grab this. This is a an exacto knife, obviously with a straight edge on the on the end of it. So this way I get straight lines. I'm just gonna basically punch it in there.
I'm just doing this for the long edges right now. Short edges, obviously this is going to be a little bit too big for it. But, this will give you a nice clean line if you have this available. If not, an X-Acto knife will work. Um, actually, the insides I could probably use that. It's just barely the right length. So let's see. Let's see how it works. Might as well, right? There you go. For the rest of it. My blade is a little bit dull, so I have to press a little bit extra hard. That's what I get for using it and not replacing it, right? Now, I have my basic shape. I'm going to cut my diamond out from the center. Okay, so I have my basic shape, and here's my plain piece of color. Obviously, it's a bit big, but you can see that the color shines through quite nicely. And for this one, all I did was take a Sharpie and colored it black. You can do the same, or you can leave it. Totally up to you. I'm going to leave it for right now so you get an idea of what it all looks like. I'm going to cut this part down a little so it fits. And then just gonna tape it in place. Alright, so as you can see I did that wrong. Hey, it happens. So there we go. And I don't look like a complete idiot. Just partial idiot, right? Alright, so now you have the inside, you want to make sure that this faces your outside. So you're looking at that, just going to place it in there. You can have it face any direction you want. Um, I'm going to try and have it face... Um, so I'm going to have it try and go like that. Um, have it even. Um, grab a piece of tape and take a look at it on the front and see what it looks like. This is actually one of the more difficult parts because you're reaching on the inside. I probably should have done this before putting the connection pieces on, right? There we go. So you can see it. it I like where, where it fits right now. It's mostly centered, not an exact, but uh, I'm not going to tape it all the way down because um, it still needs a little bit of movement in uh, in here, and you see it's kind of dirty looking in there, but it'll work. Okay, so got all my tape set up, got everything ready for putting the back side on, and uh, this is kind of difficult to do, but. If you, well, if you do it the way I do, it's kind of difficult. If you want to do it somewhere other way, go for it. Um, so, the way this is going to work, 
if I can get this to fit properly. There we go. Is you're gonna set it on here. Make sure you pull the tape back. Here we go. Now this is the difficult part from here on because you're not gonna be able to see everything that you're doing. See if you can see what I'm doing. It's difficult to see the angle that I'm working on on the camera and do this at the same time. I need like two extra hands. Try and get the best angle for you that I can. As you can see, it's not landing exactly the way I want it to. There we go. So another good way to do this is put tape on both sides, pull it back, bend this piece back, and then kind of slap it on there. See if that'll work. All right, so I've got one corner left should be done. All right, so there's ghost number two. Uh, it's a little bit different than the other one, not much, but you can tell this one has slight different sizes mainly because of the cutting. Uh, you can always change this up however you like. Use different material, uh, different um, ways to connect it. You can put masking tape on the outside, hot glue. You can use different materials like, I don't know, aluminum, um, plastic. You probably even 3D print this. Um, but this is just a quick and easy way to do it. This probably only took me about maybe about, what two hours just getting and that's doing a whole video on it and everything so it probably wouldn't even take that long if you had everything set up so thank you for watching uh, if you want to leave some comments feel free I know if you if you plan on uh, blasting me because I did this a different way than what you wanted me to do it um, I'm probably not even gonna read your comment but if you know, you want to leave a, some criticism on saying, hey, there's a, these other ways to do it. Go for it. I'm open to suggestions. Um, this is n by no means a uh, professional job. It's just uh, something fun to do. So thank you. Bye.